So what's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, we have a lot of stuff to do before spring hits, really hits, it's almost here. It is almost here. And uh, one of the things I gotta do is finish setting up my permanent, semi-permanent paddocks by using a T-post, by using two T-posts and a bunch of my, let's see if you guys can see them over here. They're the 67 cent fiberglass fence post that I got on Amazon. These guys here work amazingly. What I did, already drilled a holes through them, uh, have them all lined up in a row here. You can barely see them, which is actually really nice. I actually went and did them all, got the whole farm lined up with them, except for like one or two paddocks that I just need to order some more. So what I'm gonna do is just go through and finish building the fences, because what this allows us to do is move the cows every day by just lifting up two gate handles. I mean, it's the easiest thing. Move, lifting up two gate handles and moving their water. Wow. So this right here, between this T-post here and that T-post there is gonna be the gate. And when they're in that paddock there, which is approximately, it's uh, about 150 by 300, so it's just under an acre. And uh, we'll be able to move the cows, in the springtime especially, uh, one day each. So we can start grazing sooner and graze longer into winter time. You see, most people don't do this method because it takes so much extra time. Because, you know, most people just turn the cows out, okay, check on them, oh, they're good. But what we do takes a lot more time and management. We want to be able to let the grass rest and regrow. And that means that we can have a lot more cows here on a lot less land, which is a big deal. Also, we'll also also we'll be able to graze longer in the winter time. Like this year, this is our first year here, by the way. We didn't start feeding hay until mid-January, and I think when it's looking like after this crazy storm and the weather that we've been having the last couple days, we might be able to graze a little bit earlier than normal as well. Big deal. A lot of cost savings on hay. So you guys can come with me and see how I build these fences. So remember, this is very semi-temporary. We'll call it that. It's not like a it's not a perimeter fence, this is just, you know, a bunch of cross fencing. So we don't need like heavy, you know, high tensile wire, you know, 12 gauge to where, you know, it can actually, you know, keep things out per se. It's just so the cows know not to go, where not to go. So we just tie it on to, you know, a T post here. And this has been working great. And then we just get a long screwdriver, put that through the middle. And we walk. So I just really loosely tied off here, just to keep it in place, the wire. Walked it all the way down, left it on the ground. No big deal. Because then what I'm gonna do is come through with just some spare wire, take the wire, Hold up to here, run a wire through there, tie it on. Super simple, super cheap, super effective, super effective. And the thing is, I space them out like 36 feet apart, so they're able to hold up the wire just fine. Takes a lot, lot, lot less posts. Some people might say you need a cotter key, but why have to go through all the trouble of getting those and buying them when you can just take some extra wire, put it through, tie, twist and then snip ta-da now we just need to do that like a million more times and then ta-da it's not done yet because there's too much slack here so all I'm gonna do is Loosen this, re-tighten it, make sure it's all on the insulator, and then we're done. Then we go to the second one. Tight. Like that. Rip it around. Again. Then twist it off. Now that 
works really well really really well now do I need to do the second one I, I do because of the llamas the cows would stay in just with this one I might lower it down a, uh, a notch or two but the llamas I need that because they can easily duck under this uh, this wire here this whole setup th this whole setup maybe cost like I think it calculated, calculated out to be like eleven dollars super cheap saves me a ton a ton of time without having to go put up the wire and everything because to, to, to put up the wire especially if i had to do the two wires now for the llamas and our future alpacas probably take me about 15 minutes doesn't seem like a lot this takes me 30 seconds add that up over 365 because we move them every day adds up a lot that adds up to be a lot of time we do it again come here wire come through just loosely Tie it, give yourself some, you know, extra. This is just to hold it on. Then we go. And that is it. That is a two wire cross fence with 17 gauge wire, two T post, and uh, however many uh, 67 cent uh, fiberglass fence posts you need. Super, super, super simple. That's why we're doing this all around the farm completely. Like literally all we have to do is we're gonna put a gate here and our gate consists of, okay, poly wire attached to this and that down there, two different lines, comes over here to our not all the way set up yet to here hooks on and then hooks on down here hooks on and then hooks on down here done move move water cows done then if we want to get fancy with it then if we want to get fancy with it which we probably will is we'll probably set up a line we'll probably set up a line that goes halfway in between that, that will split up the the, that will split up the paddocks even more just 150 feet one wire it just gives them this area for the beginning of the day that area for the end of the day or in the summertime this area for one day that area for two days and maybe even make it smaller and smaller and smaller in winter time to where you know what we might not have to feed hay looking into some options gonna be uh, doing some cover crops next year that I think is gonna help a lot and uh, gonna try some you know maybe experiment a little bit with some uh, some warm season annuals, throw out a little bit of you know, the, throw out a little bit of native grass seed, eastern gamma grass, switch grass, uh, Indian grass, and big blue stem. Throw a little bit of those out. We got some. Right over there is actually where we had a ton of Indian grass and big, big blue stem last year. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that grows back up. It should, and then that will seed itself all throughout here, and we'll probably put the seed over there. That way, one uphill. That way, you know, if there's any get washed it down, it gets washed down this way, not over here, and gets washed out to the road. No good. And then secondly, it's easier for the wind to blow it and just, you know, use gravity to our advantage. Instead of just relying on the cows to walk uphill and poop over there to spread that seed that way. So we're going to experiment. Probably do a little bit of a sorghum Sudan. See how that does. It's going to get like 12 feet tall. That'd be pretty cool. But anyways, that is one done. We have like five more to build. Don't know if we're gonna get it all done today, but uh, don't know if I have enough wire. Actually, I might have to run over to tractor supply and pick up some more. But this sets us up really well for spring, so let's go do that. Ta-da, it's done. 
That's two uh, two wires ran, but it makes enough for three paddocks. Check it out. One paddock, two paddock, and because that's the end of the property, three paddocks. Just a little bit of time. Takes very minimal effort, very minimal money, and just saves just a bunch of bunch of headache. I mean, I can't be more happy about how this is turning out. We have a couple more to do on that side, and I uh, think I'll get that done later today. Probably will. I'll probably take it with me when uh, we get back at it because I want to finish this. I think we have, if we have enough wire. I think we have enough wire. Not 100 percent sure. If we have enough water, we're finishing it. If, we're, if we have enough wire, we're finishing this today. And uh, at least this half, there's like one or two uh, paddocks on that side that, on the other side of the farm that uh, got to do. But this makes it so easy. Lift up the wire, let the cows through. They're happy, they're getting away from their parasites. They're getting away from, you know, they're getting away from taking the grass down too low to where it takes a long time for it to regrow. They're always getting the best ice cream grass, the healthiest. And that's why the beef is gonna taste like it does. It just not that grass not the grass fed stuff that they say is grass fed and it's all gamey and tough and everything it's different it's different check it out there's a turtle right there Let's see if i can make it move it's a turtle it's a turtle hey turtle see it right right there all right we're back at it now that whole south side of this field Completely done, completely done. All I have to do, open a gate. Great. Now, north side, which is this. Getting my directions mixed up. This is south, that's north. Okay, smart. North side of the field, completely done. South side of the field, which is this. We have one, and then kind of two, because we have to go around the pond, and we're, we're gonna do, I'll show you get that when we get there, but we're gonna go on either side of the pond and put a wire so the cows don't get into it. And then we have the last one down there that we need to do, and we're good. This makes it to where there is 16 paddocks on this side of the farm. So for 16 days or two weeks, the cows will be here in the springtime. In the summertime, they'll be here for a month. In the wintertime, they might be here, we'll see, fall, winter, don't know. Don't know yet, it might be a month and a half, two months, if I can break it up and if we have enough grass growing, we'll see. But right now, I'm doing this side. Boom, another one done. Another one done. I want to guys, I want to show you guys something though. We'll go over here and pick up the wire. So here's the end of that one and I still haven't figured out a good way to bring that back without having to walk all the way back over here. But that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you this. Here, we're at the end of our property. This is our neighbor's property here. The same guy that used to lease this land that we own now, um, just last year, runs cows over there. So it's done identical. Why? Because all the gates were open, okay? Look at this, and look at that, okay? Look at this, you can barely see any green. I mean, there's little splotches here and there. Look at that. That right there, I mean, it's the difference of one side of the fence to the other, look at this. Green, brown, dead, alive. Now the battery's almost done right now, and I don't wanna have to walk another half a mile to go get a new one but I don't want to rag on my neighbor at all, but that's what this management can do. We're gonna be grazing faster than anybody else, why? Because this green grass that's growing up, let's see if we can find a little good spot right here, look. You can see this is a couple inches tall now. Now, if the cows were allowed to just roam wherever they wanted to roam, they would see it come up to here and they'd eat it. And then they'd see it come back up just a little bit and then they eat it. That's what's going on over there at the other property. Here, they haven't been on here in months. They probably haven't been on here in three or four months. And look what's going on. Now, I shouldn't have mowed. We'd have been in a lot better position if I didn't mow. But look at this. This is uh, getting close. 
So like I said, the battery's gonna die. I might try and shoot some on my phone because the house is way over there. But if this is the end of the video, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, all right? This management style, I can tell you right now, it absolutely 